to actually go outside in these things. What would you prefer? Yellow spandex? Fox's X-Men movie universe was messy to say the least. Sony seems to have taken up their mantle recently as the mutants finally make their way to Disney's MCU. With the X-Men 97 cartoon coming out and Hugh Jackman returning to his famous role this summer with Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool by his side, why not take a look back at all the movies released so far and grade them in a tier list format? We'll go in order, starting with the original film from 2000. Along with Richard Donner's Superman and Tim Burton's Batman before it, this is considered by many to be a true trailblazer for comic book movies. Director Brian Singer, Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen, Halle Berry, Hugh Jackman, and many more led the way for a solid launching point to the franchise that excited audiences worldwide and showed what was possible with these characters. Not everything about it holds up, but the original X-Men movie is still a pretty darn good start. We're going to place it on the B tier. For years, people raved about X2, calling it one of the best comic book movies ever. Since its release over two decades ago, we've gotten better and worse films in the genre. I know many fans still hold a torch for this one, and it's easy to understand why. It improved on the first outing and pushed ahead with what a sequel can do. I don't think it's the masterpiece that others may believe it to be, but it is one of the best X-Men movies. For those reasons and more, we're going to place it in the A tier. Brian Singer left to make Superman Returns and took Cyclops with him. Brett Ratner took over the directing reins for this, at the time, finale to the main series, which is laughable to think about now. I don't think I hated this movie as much as most fans seem to, at least at the time. It's a mess, but kind of a fun mess? And yes, they screwed up the Dark Phoenix saga. It wouldn't be the last time for that. I love Beast, so seeing Kelsey Grammer in that makeup was just a cool aspect for me personally. Not good, but as subsequent films have shown, not the worst either. We'll move it into the C tier. This was most definitely considered a low point for the franchise by many. Remember that work print with unfinished visual effects that got leaked before this movie officially came out? Yeah, that happened. We got Ryan Reynolds' first appearance as Deadpool here, but we all know how that went. Reynolds even mocked this portrayal in his second solo movie. This also killed more films exploring the origins of the mutants. I'll admit, I don't really hate this movie like maybe I should. I remember it being subpar but somewhat watchable on my first viewing. Time has made it much worse. For me, this is just above an F, slipping into the D tier. This isn't what I wanted. I enjoyed this quite a bit. With Matthew Vaughn at the helm, it felt like a proper new beginning. The cast was great, introducing us to younger versions of our characters, including great turns from Michael Fassbender, James McAvoy, and Nicholas Hult. I was looking forward to where else they could go with these actors, but the future ended up being a mixed bag. Regardless, First Class is just about first rate. We'll put it in the A tier. James Mangold took control of the X-Men movie's main character for a vastly improved solo sequel. There's some good stuff here, as we see Logan deal with the fallout of the tragic death of Jean Grey and get a much-needed change in scenery. Based on the beloved Chris Claremont Frank Miller run, The Wolverine has a few memorable scenes and solid character work from Jackman, but the best material from this team was still yet to come. The Wolverine is a solid B. This is my favorite X-Men team movie. I don't think I'm alone in that opinion. Combining both casts for another film based on a seminal comic book storyline, Days of Future Past gave us something special, with Bryan Singer and the original actor's triumphant return to the franchise. Thus far, this one holds up quite well. An absolute blast to watch and rewatch. This is just below the S tier for me at a very high A.
Deadpool fits into its own category but still shares DNA with X-Men, using some of its characters and recognizable locations. This flick turned the genre upside down and was a trendsetter with its meta jokes and commentary. Of course, Deadpool and other comic book characters were doing this years before the movie, but to a more mainstream audience, it was the first time they experienced a concept like this in the superhero genre. It was a real passion project for Ryan Reynolds and company too. They delivered beyond the high expectations of a fan base hungry to see this character adapted properly. It's hilarious, it broke new ground, and it still has a ton of heart and R-rated action to set it apart from other Marvel films. Deadpool is top tier. A clear S. After the tease at the end of Days of Future Past, people were hyped to see Apocalypse on the big screen. Unfortunately, his full appearance made for a pretty dull X-Men adventure with overloaded action and a questionable costume design for the clearly trying Oscar Isaac. Also, at this point, it was apparent this alternate timeline or whatever Fox was setting up had no real continuity. Not that it would have mattered much if they delivered a stronger film. I honestly struggled to remember the details of the plot here, and its repetitive nature when compared to past better X-Men films ended up making this outing more forgettable than anything else. It flirts with the D tier, but I'm going to place it on the low end of C. Logan is not only the best X-Men film, it's one of the best Marvel films and among the cream of the crop in terms of comic book movies in general. It's not without a few small, forgivable flaws, but this thing hit all the right notes in just the right way. The performances, direction, script, tone, emotion, and more made for a truly unique and unexpected experience. I love this movie. Since its release, we've seen Patrick Stewart and now Hugh Jackman go back on their word to retire their interpretations of Professor X and Wolverine, respectively. It's kind of sad that this brilliant bookend to Logan's story wasn't the last time we saw these actors in these roles, but who's not looking forward to Deadpool and Wolverine? This one goes at the top of the S tier. A strong follow-up to the radical original, Deadpool 2 brought in the double-dipping Josh Brolin as Cable and added an intriguing time travel element to the zany antics of Ryan Reynolds' Merc with a Mouth. There are a few things about the direction of the story that kind of bug me, but if you can get past it, it's an enjoyable follow-up that adds more laughs, action, and emotion to the franchise. Not quite as fresh or memorable as the original, but Deadpool 2 still hit the target. A solid A. Boy, this was a bomb in more ways than one. Disney had already purchased Fox by the time this came out, which left everything feeling inconsequential. Lame duck superhero films are an odd happening, just ask Aquaman 2. It was a second bite at the apple for the Dark Phoenix saga, and fans of that storyline were let down again. There's pretty much nothing about this movie that I remember in a positive light. The buzz about it was all negative going in, and it somehow still flew in under my low expectations. The mainline Fox X-Men films went out with a whimper. Dark Phoenix is an F. Well, that's just lazy writing. Waiting in the wings for years was the long-delayed New Mutants. This movie had not one, not two, not three, not four, but five release dates, finally hitting theaters in August of 2020. It was supposed to come out first in April of 2018. I saw the movie on Disney Plus, and while I give them credit for trying a new approach, it just didn't work. The film doesn't go far enough to be categorized as horror, and is too minimalistic to land as an entertaining X-Men offshoot. The characters are pretty stock, despite a couple decent attempts at development, and the pacing is all over the place. It feels like some of the movie was cut to shreds in editing, and that's a shame because I do think there were ideas that could have had some play here. As is, the latest X-Men effort left the franchise on a low note. I entertained giving it a C for effort, but the New Mutants, D. This isn't what I wanted. What the future holds for the X-Men is still unclear. We've seen a few characters pop up to ready us for a full inclusion into the MCU, but time will tell how they're utilized. 
Until then, we have Deadpool and Wolverine to look toward. Hopefully, that will build excitement for what lies ahead.